Hello and welcome, I'm the Emperor and this is Star Trek Resurgence, so let's jump right in. We'll create us a new save on an empty slot and we'll see where this adventure takes us. This is a dramatic labs adventure. The relationships and events you are about to experience will be shaped by the choices you make. Asteroids from Dramatic Labs. Asteroids crashing into each other. A shuttle, which Captain's designation log, I could not read. The crew is restless. After spending too many months piecing our ship back together, we're finally about to venture out on a new mission. And the crew isn't letting this unprecedented ion storm slow them down. They're ready for something different. I know I am. Perhaps more than any of them. Fortunately, nothing ever stays the same. It's entropy. The nature of the universe. Change is inevitable. And while entropy says order gives way to chaos, in this case, Change is good. Our new first officer is en route to the Resolute. Jara Ryder. I know she'll bring a welcome dose of new blood to the crew. Is this who we are? <clears throat> That is a shuttle with a lot of seats. Right trigger. I'm playing on mouse. I don't know what right trigger does. I think Thanks. right click was correct no here. I, uh, I'm not great with flying. Well, welcome to Starfleet then. Shuttles are the worst. You don't like flying. And yet, you joined Starfleet. <laughs> oh god, the animation. There's a reason I'm not a pilot. You should try it sometime. That was very helpful of I. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little anxious. I hadn't noticed. I'm on my way to my first assignment. When we get to the starbase, I'm transferring on to the Resolute. So am I. Is it it? Easy for Chara to step in at the eleventh hour like this. Very good. She's half the officer I knew she could become when she was a cadet at Starfleet Academy. She'll be the XO this ship needs right now. XO meaning commanding officer. Ah! Star Trek ships. The stations look absolutely awful, but the ships, the ships are a thing of beauty. Change of station. Oh, a little docking sequence. Clonk. Let's see who else we can traumatize with our callous replies. Oh, excuse me. We walk around. Very good. Well, the prompts have also updated. A star base on the very edge of Federation space. Long way from home now. Beautiful. I don't like how modern Star Trek is so very dark on the interiors. That's just I don't I don't like that. I wish it were cream colored gray again. I'm not usually such a nervous wreck, by the way. I actually did well at the Academy. Oh yeah? Maybe you've heard of the Torvalon test? Sounds familiar. It's a tactical simulator that makes the Kobayashi Maru look like a picnic on Pintaris 5. Anyway, I finished in the top 20. Not just in my class. I, I mean, all time. In the history of the Academy. So, there's that. Fine. Really? That's quite impressive. 
Thank let's you. let's be a little bit supportive. It was tough, but you know, I set my mind to it and it paid off. Well, how about you do the same for flying, dear Ensign? Please place your hand here. Hold it there for a few seconds. Oh. Oh. Oof. Difficult, difficult. Nearly didn't get that right. We have a ring. Does that mean we're married? Welcome, Commander Rydek. Wait, you're Jara Rydek? You absolutely crushed the Torvalon test. You, you finished in what, like the top three? That would be me. <laughs> now I'm really... It, it's an honor to meet you, Commander. Sorry, I, I didn't realize before. I, I just came off the shuttle and was glad to be on solid ground. Let's try and be somewhat friendly. Ensign. Paul Calloway. Paul Calloway. Good to meet you. Very good. I believe Commander Ermod is expecting you. He's in the concourse just ahead. See you on the Resolute. Come on, Ensign. Chin up. That's how everyone starts in Star Trek. You meet your commanding officer and you put your foot in your mouth. I will do the same. Oh, we can jog. Oh, they are also jogging. Why are you jogging? Are you jogging because I'm jogging? <laughs> it would be so funny if everyone just jogged when I started jogging. Oh, 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 a very populated area. Commander Ermont is a bullion. So I'm looking for someone with blue skin. Someone with blue skin. That shouldn't be too hard to spot. We found we have some green here. Examine information. Ah, there he is. Excuse me. Sorry, everyone. Let me walk through your conversation. Welcome to the edge of the galaxy, Commander Rydek. I'm Commander Jan Ermat, operations officer on the Resolute. Commander? I hope there wasn't too much trouble getting here. This storm isn't making anything easy for us right now. I know conditions are less than ideal at the moment. It was a bit bumpy, but otherwise okay. Oh, my apologies. This storm is unlike anything I've seen before. I like that the prompts very much flow with the conversation. Like there's no short notice. waiting. Remember for you to I make a pick. You have a, ch you have a time frame, pick, and then it just keeps flowing. I like that. Coming from a premier starship and all. To our little research vessel. I'll do my best to live up to expectations. Let's try and be humble. I'm sure you'll do just fine. And if I can help in any way, just let me know. I think that's the Star Trek way. We don't want to be the villain in our own story. But then again, we could go for a character arc. Look at it. The USS Resident. She may not look like much compared to the bigger ships, but as far as science vessels go, she can more than hold her own. And she doesn't look so bad considering six months ago she was nearly cracked in half, venting plasma, fighting for her life. It was an accident? The equipment malfunction. An accident suggests fault, but no one's to blame. It was a planned test, but the warp core was pushed beyond its limits. It destabilized the dilithium, there was a runaway reaction, and the Dang. warp bubble deformed. Not the warp bubble. We thought we could reach a higher resonant frequency, but it was more than she could handle. Big shame. It cost us our first officer and 22 of our crew. At the end of the day, we're all responsible for each other. I can't even begin to imagine what that must have been like for you. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It does weigh heavy. There are some things you can't forget. It's been six months. What's the attitude among the crew now? Unsettled. But I hope that a new mission will help them move forward. Why would they be They're unsettled? It's, it's been such a long time. Listen, I realize you've known Captain Solano for quite some time. And I'm glad you're ready to bring your best. 
But I should warn you that when the captain announced you would be the new first officer, there were those who felt it was a mistake, that he should have promoted from within. So you might want to tread lightly at first. Until they come to value your contributions as much as he does. No. We respect the respect chain of command here. That way, they're gonna have to get over it. In Starfleet, the captain doesn't necessarily get to like choose their else. own commanding true, officers. I wouldn't say it like that. Well, I would. Starfleet has assigned us a high priority mission to the Hotari region. Press enter to explore the impact of your choice. Jara made a mixed first impression with Commander Ermut coming off as rather abrasive, yet still humble while showing empathy for what the crew of the Resolute suffered. Ensign Callaway was grateful for Jara's sense of humor when he was nervous on the shuttle flight. Alright, so we are going to be interacting with either five characters or there's more around here. Jara and Carter. Oh, are we going to play two different people? No, I don't want to exit the game. Why would I want to... What? Why does escape bring me to that here? Alright, okay, fine. Board. I know he's eager to see you. Will we be mission ready in time? We have every intention. The crew has been working around the clock to get the ship ready. There's still so much to do. Like, listen, I have reached the rank of commander. I deserve me the respect I'm owed here. Is this the second character we're going to be playing? Damn, crusty crust. Stuck. I got just the thing. Find the plasma torch. I mean, obviously, I know what the plasma torch is. This. Clearly. Let's vaporize. Oh, oh. A little bit of a mini game. Sure, let's go. Let's do it. I think this type of game really lends itself to Star Trek. It's kind of silly, but story driven. Is properly the way to go. And that. D and that. Okay, sure. Is that. The lower decks. Well, don't we like that show? I thought the thing was totally fried. Nice work, Carter. Nothing to it, Millie. And not a moment too soon. The boss wants us down in engineering, like now. All right, let's go down to engineering. I'm not quite sure where the performance issues are coming from. There's a few frame drops here and there. No, we're not going to talk to a crewman. We're we are being expected by the boss. So we're going to play two people. Makes sense, somewhat. In in oh yeah, this is a better interior. This is what I'm speaking about. This could be brighter on the ceiling, but this looks much 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 nicer, much more Star Trekky. So in Star Trek, in the in the episodes, often there are multiple story arcs happening parallel. So I'm not too mad about this. Though generally I do prefer focusing on a singular storyline or a character. Engineering. But let's see. I heard the new Exo just arrived. Won't be long before we get underway. I just hope whatever Chovak called us down for, it's something good. I can never tell with him. I'd rather not end up degaussing plasma manifolds. Hanging upside down makes me queasy. You and me working together, we can tackle anything he throws at us. Your optimism is positively contagious. <laughs> she doesn't sound very convinced. Looks like we got here before... Lieutenant Commander Chovak. We were just looking for you, Commander. Petty Officers Ed Salar. 
Diaz. I was beginning to think you would be late. We are all hands on deck right now, which means if you are not at your post at the appointed time, I do not have someone to replace you. A point I have been forced to make to Petty Officer Edzelar on repeated occasions. Uh, apologies for the delay, Commander. I do not want your apologies. Simply see to it that it does not happen again. So, I don't suppose you wanted us down here to check in before we go off duty? Equip yourselves in EV suits to work on the exterior of the hull. I need you to tune the structural integrity field for optimal performance. The subspace distortions and ionic interference we are experiencing are preventing the proper calibration. But this ship must be ready to depart shortly, despite the storm. The precise nature of these disturbances are not fully understood. But many systems have been affected by the wide band of emissive activity. How concerned should we be about the storm? Uh, are you worried? Vulcans do not worry. We calculate the variables and take appropriate precautions to mitigate the risk. Right now, that entails making critical preparations, because long-range sensors show that these disturbances will be more severe at our destination, the Hotari system. Well, we better be prepared for you this. have your orders. Do not delay. Yes, Commander Chobok. I will not be remembering All any of those names. On deck. Oh, what's that? All hands on deck. That's what Chobok said. You know what that means? It means this ship isn't ready to go out and the brass know it. So they're throwing every warm body at it. And they're going to leave on schedule. It all comes down to us, Nilly. We're the ones who will get it ready. I know what we can do. But this isn't just any old refit or any old relaunch. Oh, whoa. <laughs> oh, come on, buddy. A lot of new faces coming on board. It's got to be tough coming as a replacement. That's for sure. They seem all right. Something that happened six months ago while they were off on another ship. Well, that's nothing to hold against them. Yeah, you're right. I guess getting a little new blood on board doesn't hurt. Hold on. Now there's an old face I didn't expect to see again. Hey, Miranda! You weren't gonna leave without me, were you? Miranda, you're here? We thought you were staying on the Adirondack. Transfer came in at the last minute, so I figured I'd slum it on this bucket of bolts. Looks like you got her back together pretty nicely. I wasn't sure what to expect. I'm gonna take the high road here, pretend you didn't say that, and welcome you aboard. He's a better diplomat than I am. He still owes me a bottle of Saurian brandy. Don't think I forgot. Oh, yeah, it's coming back to me now. Maybe Carter can rustle up that bottle and we can give you a proper welcome. As soon as we wrap up this quick little spacewalk. All right, let's get out there then. Here, let me help you. <sighs> Thanks. So what's the word? Are you back in the security rotation? Yep. Still running with the usual suspects. Whoa. Good to go. Imagine if people were this nice to each other in real life. And so professional. <laughs> See you on the other side. Activating magnetic souls. Ah. Boop. All right, then. Let's go calibrate some doohickeys and jingamba bulbs. I'm trying to walk not into the door, but I can only go forward at this point. Oh, that's that view never gets old. only slightly disorientating. Let's go. Lovely, lovely.
Captain Solano should be here momentarily. Wait, I don't get to adjust the thingamabob? Dang. Ooh, they have geodes over there. I like geodes. Let me look at geodes. You'll have to forgive me. I don't know much about Koblihads. But my understanding is you need a steady supply of deridium to keep your cell structure stabilized, or bad things start to happen. Okay. And we have plenty of deridium in sickbay, so there's no risk of running out. Thank you. Feel free to make yourself at home. And help yourself to whatever you like from the replicator. All right, let's snoop geodes and a diploma from the Starfleet Academy for Zachariah Zolano. Around. Don't even know where mine is. That doesn't speak well. Oh, the toy train. I that looks very trains. rusty. The warp engines of their day, apparently. I mean, they were, they were, of course, until the Hyperloop came along and changed everything. <laughs> the first mineral Captain Solano ever discovered. Always was the nostalgic type. Okay, so we're learning things about the Captain here. Old World Globe. Can't wait to plot a course myself. Just a sip of something. Let's see. Raktagino. I don't know what that is, so let's get it. Raktagino. Beep, beep, boop. The sounds are so satisfying. Look at that Starfleet branded mug. <laughs> that sure has a kick. And it's gone like magic. Last time I saw you, it was graduation from the academy. You'd already secured one of the most prestigious assignments possible. And you were burning with enough ambition to fuel seven trips around the Necrid Expanse. It's good to see you again, Captain. I could not be happier to have you on the Resolute. The only regret is that we couldn't provide you with a warmer welcome. The arrival of a first officer to her new ship deserves a bit of fanfare. But, unfortunately, we've had our hands full with the refit. You can spare me the pomp and circumstance. There's plenty of work to be done without all that. You always had a work ethic like nothing I'd ever seen. Rock solid work ethic. That's just what this ship needs at the moment. As I'm sure you've heard, we've had a rough go of it these last six months. Mm. The ship suffered some damage. Some. But not nearly as much as the crew. I heard that you had an equipment malfunction. Is that what they're calling it? No, that's that's just someone being generous. If anything, it was a leadership malfunction. <sighs> we were on the verge of a major scientific breakthrough. A quantum leap forward in warp core technology. 10,000 teradynes per second. The ability to travel at a sustained rate of speed longer and faster than we ever dreamed. What would have been the crowning achievement of my career? Right there. Within our grasp. <sighs> Until it all went so horribly wrong. Don't be so hard on yourself, we Captain. pushed her too hard, and a warp core malfunction overloaded the system. Creating a pressure gradient way beyond what the ship can handle. <sighs> it was heartbreaking. We lost some of our best people. As captain, I have to take full responsibility. It was my decision to make. And I have to live with the consequences. Hmm. We all know the risks when we sign up. There are no guarantees. As much as we tell ourselves otherwise. True. But as captain, my job is to mitigate and manage the risks as much as possible. And that's where I failed. In my defense, I will say, I might have avoided the whole ordeal if my senior staff had been willing to trust me. 
There was a lot of pushback from my former XO. I think that cost me his confidence. I don't want you to pull any punches. Certainly not on my account. But once we decide on a course of action, I need everyone to fully commit to the mission. Anything short of that just won't work. And that's when things start to go sideways. Whether I agree or disagree, I can promise that I'll be honest to a fault. Good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But at the end of the day, it has to be my call. Look, I'll be blunt. We can't afford another mistake. Or at least, I can't. I feel like my career is hanging in the balance here. It probably is, Captain. We need a win. Something to restore the crew's confidence. I understand. On a more positive note, Starfleet has tasked us with what they're calling a mission of the highest priority. Escorting a senior diplomat to Hotari space. Two previously peaceful and otherwise non-aggressive civilizations now find themselves on the brink of all-out war. So it's a peacekeeping mission. I see it as a golden opportunity to not only prove what the Resolute and her crew are truly capable of, but also a mission for which we're uniquely qualified. This ionic storm. Our long-range sensors suggested several orders of magnitude stronger than anything on record. A total anomaly like nothing we've seen before. Incredible. And you'll never guess where it leads. Hatari. Exactly. Very nearly in the precise location where we're headed. Where I imagine the interference will be exponentially greater. Who is the senior diplomat we're escorting? <laughs> They're both that with their noses up to the glass. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I expect we'll have some rough sledding when we arrive, so I need you to prepare the crew for the worst. There's just one more thing I want to clarify up front. The metric that, for me, will be the ultimate measure of your success. What is it? If, after serving as my first officer, you don't one day find yourself with a ship of your own, then I will consider it my personal failure. When that might happen is entirely up to you. But it goes without saying. You have my full support. Thank you. But I feel like I still have so much to learn. You'll have plenty of opportunity. And if you're willing to put in the work, I'll do everything in my power to help you along the way. Come. Let me introduce you to the crew. So how was our introduction here then? Reassured by our modesty leadership potential after our first meeting. Okay, let's try and click resume rather than exit the game again for no good reason. Didn't even wait for me. Oh, we don't exit right straight onto the bridge. Okay, all right, okay. It's not, it's not, a, not an enterprise, not a Voyager. Ah, oh, that's a lovely bridge. I do like me some teal. Everyone, if I could have your attention for a moment. I'd like to introduce Commander Jara Rydak, our new first officer. Some quick introductions. This is Lieutenant Handar, our helmsman. A Bajoran. One of. The business. Mm -hmm. One of. Well, what he lacks in humility, he more than makes up for in ability. A pleasure to meet you, Commander. Likewise. Next, we have Commander Westbrook, our Chief Science Officer. I've come to rely on his expert counsel on a regular basis. Pleasure. Commander Rydak, it is such an honor to meet you. This is our Tactical Officer, Lieutenant Bedrosian. He's been looking forward to meeting you for about as long as I can remember. Why? I've been following your career for quite some time. Why? And I look forward to learning as much as I can from you. If anything, the honor is mine. Well, I have to admit, one of the reasons I've followed your career is because you're part Kobliad. Because of what you've overcome. Starfleet stands up for people who can't defend themselves. What have I overcome? You were one of those people once. But since then, you've done so much to protect others who need it. I really admire that. So, you've been something of an inspiration to me. Not that I've done anything close to what you've done. I don't know what to say. 
That's incredibly flattering, thank you. I hope someday I can follow in your footsteps. I'm sure you will. And then, of course, you've already met Commander Ermont. Please, do everything you can to make Commander Rydeck feel at home here. I'll be on the Starbase, have an urgent meeting with the Starbase commander to get our authorization to get underway. If they drag their feet any longer, we won't make our rendezvous. The bridge is yours. Amazing. Acting captain in the first 30 minutes. Let us sit in the captain's chair. The most coveted chairs of all the chairs in the world. Commander, Chief Engineer Chovak needs to lower the structural integrity field. He sent a crew out to recalibrate the emitters in response to the danger posed by the storm. We just need your go-ahead. Permission granted. Lowering structural integrity field now. Entering maintenance mode. <laughs> maintenance mode. Condition. All right, back outside we go. I do get to adjust the doohickey and ching them at things. Great, let's get to that emitter. Okay, there's no looking around. There's only walking where we're allowed to walk. Every time we're out here, I half expect to see her in pieces again. She's still got some scars on her. It adds character. When I joined Starfleet, all I wanted was a ride out of town. But this isn't exactly how I pictured it. On the outside of the ship? <laughs> no. Ah. Sometimes it feels like we're just part of the machinery. Don't you want more than that? I mean, Starfleet is noble and all, but it's still a machine. A massive, massive machine. I am more than that. And so are you. You wanted to get away. I enlisted because I didn't want to wait years just to get out and see the galaxy. I wanted to go somewhere, see new worlds, look up at a sky no one's ever seen before. Just because I'm cranking a hyperspanner up in a Jeffrey's tube today doesn't mean that's all I'll ever be. Is that a euphemism? Diaz to Commander Chovak. We are at the SIF emitter. Acknowledged. You may proceed with the recalibration. I also do have to wonder, why do they put certain control elements outside of the ship? Like that that just feels like a like a huge risk. A completely unnecessary risk for everyone involved. Doesn't it? It's just just the odd thing to do all right let's see equipment case what have we got here calibration tool of course it's clearly a calibration tool beginning recalibration align the sieve tune nodes to center Okay, I good. apparently did it that right. So Commander Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Well, it is, because I certainly didn't. Yes, I'm the Chief Science Officer. And I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. What a very impressive list of credentials. This is a research and discovery ship, first and foremost. Now with a former tactical officer as its new first officer. I'm curious though. A Kobliad, or half in your case, is an odd choice for first officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if... As an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation, and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion. What would happen then?
You'd leave Captain Solano without an XO. There's three other Granted, commanders on this bridge. Case scenario. But not outside the realm of possibility. That's very kind of you to be concerned about my well-being. But you don't need to trouble yourself on my account. I'll be fine. Well, I wouldn't say I was concerned. Just curious, that's all. I was giving you a way out. But there you Listen, go. Can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. Commander <laughs> Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew. And he was one of my closest friends. So I can only hope that you'll live up to expectations. I don't think I could ever replace Commander Sutherland. And it would be a mistake to even try. Seeing as Captain Solano is on the Starbase, let me give you an update on this ion storm we're flying into. It's unusual, unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. Just a moment. Well, that's probably not good, huh? We've got a massive energy wave inbound on screen. Dang, now we know what to do now that we've seen it. Tracing its trajectory. Starbase docking clamps are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wide band burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities. Up. Red alert. Aye. Iconic. Evacuating main gangway and retracting. So we're setting off without our captain. I kind of had a feeling that might happen once he left the ship. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can weaken the impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shields. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. That's right, which is why we need to send power to our shields. Bedrosia, get those shields up. Rerouting power to shields. Stand by. I am a tactical officer after all. One shot. Understood. On my command. Heading locked. Raise shields. I had to hold it down. That was a little bit confusing. This is it. Let me guess. The, the station is going to be destroyed. But we'll make it. What happened? We have experienced a surge of radiation. Oh, no. Oh, you don't say. This radiation supercharged the plasma, forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance. Blow out every primary system on the ship. Just tell us where you need us. I need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port nacelle plasma regulator. Absolutely. Can do. <laughs> Good thing Reach I didn't have to walk there. Point. Understood. Do you see the override for the level one failsafe circuits? Oh, damn. Affirmative. Engage the override. It should allow us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown. Failsafe override engaged. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other. All right, let me do that. I'm sure I can. 
click the buttons. <laughs> Riveting. Yes, yes, yes. This is how you do it. Blue goes there, orange goes here. Everyone knows this. Dears to Resolute, the fail safes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. Heads up, Carter. What is that? One of the discharges coalesced. It's coming right toward us. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser. Okay. Well, that seemed to have worked. The phaser sound. We gotta climb up the pylon. Not that there's really an up, but you know. This is all very DS9 and next generation design. I like it. Use your phaser to clear a path. I like that hitting energy with more energy is, is helpful, but I love the phaser sound. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I ran into it. What do I do? Are you alright? Yeah. I took most of it. Snuck up on me. My damage is huge. Energy damage is down to 60%. Let's just try and stay away from them, maybe. We're almost to the regular. I wouldn't have thought this would have a shooting section. That is quite impressive. With these types of games. Good thing we were already out here. Slow to the port nacelle. We have little time before it causes an overload in the engine. You must work efficiently. Oh no. That's my Achilles heel. EPS manifold adjusters reset to neutral. I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. The EPS lines to the port warp engine are back in balance. But apparently I did the right thing. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, choke on them. That's not good. We've got a lot of debris coming down. All vibrations, too. We can't finish the EPS regulation in these conditions. Please advise. We have to release the ship from that other docking clamp or the hull will be ripped apart. There's a problem. The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Put them through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. The docking clamp isn't functioning. We're exploring the our option options. The option is to detonate the emergency release. Commander, hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull. Which theoretically will repel the docking clamp. Yes, the hull polarity. Crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. 
Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Chara? Captain, you brought me here because you trusted me. Can you trust me now? You better be sure you make the right decision. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. Okay. There is protocol. And there are lives. Let's are reverse the polarity. Alive? We're gonna flip hull polarity to disengage the clamps. Yes, Commander. The captain will not like it. But I got the bridge. Repair crew, this is acting Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, we are going to reverse hull polarity to free us from the remaining docking clamp. Tether yourself and deactivate your boots on my mark. Understood. Oh, 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 quick time event. Eight, seven, six, oh. five, oh. four, three, <laughs> two, one. Mark! That was quite close. Exciting stuff, I must say. Plasma imbalance is reaching critical condition. We are moments from primary system failure. I got it. Oh, come on. Come on, we can do it. Are we losing the ship right away? Is this what's happening? Yes, Star Trek, we work together. I only have one W to press, but I pressed it very hard. So that counts for two W's being pressed at the same time. Why are you no longer tethered? Stay here. I got you. Petty officer Edsalar's hurt and unconscious. I'm gonna have to tow her back to the airlock. Mr. Diaz, the situation has changed. You are at risk of triggering a substantial electromagnetic arc if you approach the main hull the way you came. But Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. There's an auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edsalar there to access the interior. Roger that. Okay, we can do it. Go in there now. Oh boy. This is exciting. This is very well written so far. I'm at the auxiliary hatch. I mean, you just got hit in the head. Uh oh. That's probably bad. Oh, dang. Yes. Bring the Sith fully online. Thank you.
So the first crisis has been managed, despite our captain's objections. The price of duty. I think that will be what we'll check out next time. This was very fun. Hope you enjoyed it as well. And I see you around on that one. Also, go check out the Discord and the Twitch where we stream three times a week. And it's all quite nice and fun. Until then, bye-bye.